Hello everyone. I promised you to look at the Mars Sun exact conjunction. So let's do that very briefly because the uh, the placements are almost similar to the uh, the previous one, uh, the new moon chart. There are slight um, differences, but of course, uh, and of course, the moon is is uh, at a very different place. So here's here's the chart for November eighteenth at five forty three a.m. when the sun and Mars are going to be uh, exact, exactly conjunct each other, and uh, you can translate this this pair of planets as the emperor and its general. Because, of course, Mars is the will, and of course, it's also fighting and war and all kinds of other violent uh, acts, violent acts. And the sun rules, it tries, it tries to rule, the sun is always the most important portion of any, uh, any chart. And uh, whenever these two clash, it usually denotes that uh, you don't really know how to exercise your will. So, for instance, the sun-mars square uh, gives you the perspective that you are either always fighting for things that you are not supposed to, or you don't know how to fight. The conjunction gives you the perfect uh, alliance, so to speak. And here, Ceres is also joining them, just like in the um, in the uh, new moon chart. And uh, at the same time, Ceres is the nurturing principle. It's also your home, uh, your nation, your homeland. So here the three are showing that today the fight is for our homes or our nation. And if you look around, this is exactly what's happening. Now in the London chart, you have asteroid rising and Jupiter, retrograde Jupiter setting. Jupiter enlarges everything it touches and the, uh, the descendant is open enemies. And if you look at the rallies, uh, that, that happened in uh, in London and in any uh, in other uh, European countries. Uh, you might wonder what is going on. At the same time, Lilith denotes revolt against injustice. So the space time moment will be filled with more riots and and more protests and and uh, marches. Uh, the um, dark the the uh, the black moon Lilith the black moon Lilith. Um, Transpluto conjunction is still tight. It's going to separate soon. And uh, uh, in this particular chart, you have this, the, the moon in an applying conjunction to Pluto. My master, Julie Hall, called this particular aspect, this, uh, any, any moon Pluto uh, aspects, Hades moon. And she wrote a whole book on it, the Scorpio moon and moon in aspect to Pluto. It's one of her best books. And um, she herself had, had this because she actually, she had the Scorpio moon and a, a very tight moon Pluto square as well. So she knew everything about it. And uh, what does it mean, Hades moon? Well, it means that your soul is really going down to the underworld. And in in the Capricorn, it is also in detriment. So it's funny how... Um, in my family and my acquaintances, I have a number of Capricorn Moon uh, people around me. Um, and I know the difference in men's charts and women's charts. Um, a woman with Capricorn Moon is very hardworking, very uh, industrious, conscious, uh, serious. She takes life very seriously and is willing to put in uh, her energy and effort. And the men with Capricorn Moon are just brooding and uh, and usually um, uh, very hard for themselves, but at the same time they are also fighting with others constantly. And uh, so it's not a, it's not an easy placement to say the least. And it's easier for women, and of course it it would be easier for men as well if they accepted that it is their their uh, heart that is really stoned, stone hearted. They are stone-hearted people. This is what I usually tell them. I, I tell them other things, but it's not compatible with YouTube <laughs> rules. Anyhow, so we have an, a, an applying Moon Pluto um, conjunction. So it, the uh, the space time moment is somehow frozen, and what gives the space time moment a real interesting twist is that the Aries north node conjunction which has been there for weeks which will be there um although it's, it's going to be separating soon 
uh, it is this year's main astrological, comic astrological feature, and it describes the the uh, necessity to learn a destiny lesson at this time because our altered circumstances are drastically being altered and this is programmed chaos around you what you see are the powers that be want you to be very very impoverished they are taking away also your freedom think about this uh, this general uh id pass that they want to Im implement also the who who wants to have power over nation states when to claim that there's a pandemic uh, all sorts of things are brewing, really. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that they want a cashless society, which means that you won't have the freedom to buy whatever you want. You won't have freedom over your finances and all kinds of other stuff. And the reason why they uh, they want to push us into complete chaos with the wars, with the revolts, with the marches, with, with everything else, uh, um, because uh, after a while, because people don't like chaos and uh, after a while they will be begging for some sort of order and then the uh the world government come can come in and say okay we are going to give you a new world order this is what they are talking about and they are doing this because we are going to beg them to <laughs> to implement those those rules that are going to take away our freedom so this is it and here if you see the uh the the, the degrees they are really four minutes apart at this particular moment when the sun mass is exact. Okay, uh, there is a complex planetary picture at 25, 26 degrees, so practically the uh, sun mass conjunction uh, degrees. And uh, well, let me, I don't know how to, okay, here. Okay, so let's take this apart. There is a cardinal karmic cage which has been again there with Pluto and the nodes, although Pluto is slowly separating because it, it fi finally moves forward now. And of course, the uh, the nodes are always backtracking. And now the degree is, I mean, the orb is around three degrees. So it's, to my taste, it's way out of all because uh, with the nodes, I only allow um, uh, configurations within one and a half degrees, but the moon is bringing it in. So the moon is closing this cardinal kami cage. Kami cages are uh, pushing you towards what you need to do. Uh, the North Node is something that you have chosen for this life as a destiny choice. And the South Node is what you bring in as a some sort of uh, survival kit. And it's much easier to, to, to do whatever the South Node suggests uh, than to move towards the North Node. So we don't actually do it until we are quite old. Uh, it's de definitely in the second part of our lives, sometimes even the third trimester of our lives. But if you have a karmic cage, then the constant push of the squares, the constant um, uh, aggression, so to speak, of the squares really pushes you towards your North Node after a while. And this is a space-time moment. We need to learn how to save ourselves. We need to learn to fight under drastically altered outward circumstances. And of course, the moon is what brings in the uh, Pluto because Pluto is already separating. There's also a karmic trapeze, uh, which are two fingers of fate uh, intertwined. Uh, here is one. Uh, uh, you, you can see the sun, Sarah's Mars, uh, sextiling Pluto, moon, and the at the apex you have dark moon <clears throat> accepting the curse. And the other finger of fate has the sun, Mars, and and uh, uh, Ceres as it, as its as it, uh, its apex and the sextile uh, from the uh, north node. Aries to to dark moon is the sextile portion and the two are intertwined into this karmic trapeze the top of which is another sextile uh, with moon Pluto and Neptune and um, I'm sure you know uh, Pluto Neptune uh, aspects because it actually in the in the 20th century almost everyone uh, was born with a Pluto Neptune uh, sextile, but now <clears throat> it's the Moon who is actually closing again this sextile. 
sorry about my voice. It's really, really very early today. And I haven't, I haven't even used my voice today yet. <clears throat> and I'm okay. So anyhow, the uh, uh, Neptune, uh, Neptune moon aspects are always about clear audience and sometimes about uh, musical uh, talent as well. But it's like you have, have a clear inner voice that uh, talks to you and you know what's happening. There's also a platform. Platforms are uh, like trapezes, but they are very flat because their sides are made by semi-sextiles. Here's the platform, as you can see. Uh, the opposition by uh, the nodes and Aries are the base. And then Sun, Mars, Ceres is one side uh, of the trine and Neptune the other one. So there is also a Sun-Neptune uh, trine, which is brilliant, which is again clairvoyance. So you have a clairaudience and a clairvoyance aspect in this. And actually this is a harmony triangle at the apex of which there is the moon Pluto. So this is a clear moment then we can learn how to fight, where to fight for our home, for our nations, for our culture, uh, because there's going to be really big trouble if we don't, if we don't learn this. And um, here are the transcendental celestial objects. On the Sun Mars Ceres, you have Scythia, learn from the Scythians, from the Huns, from the Hungarians. I would say the um, ours is the only same country in Europe at the moment, I'm telling you. And the funny thing is that they are trying to throw mud on us in every other way. And uh, while the Western countries are disintegrating, the societies are disintegrating, we have very, a very peaceful existence. And of course, they don't want us to have this very, very peaceful existence. So learn from the Scythians. And there's there are two centaurs, uh, TNOs, Deucalion and Zevana. Zevana is a, uh, a, a mythical figure. She is the queen of the divas. So all kinds of... Uh, of elementals and and uh, uh, all kinds of apparitions are linked to her. And Deucalion is survivor and being chosen. He, uh, according to Greek myths, he is the son of Prometheus. And when Zeus uh, destroys mankind because he's too fed up with us and, and uh, gives us a huge flood for 40 days and everyone dies, except for... Uh, Deucalion and his wife, who are surviving it as the chosen ones, and they are the, the forefathers of the new race of uh, the human beings. So Deucalion means to be chosen and to be a survivor, and this is on the sun, so this gives us hope. However, on the moon is Aran, and Aran is uh, the lord of the underworld in Vesh mythology. And uh, so he's not just a, a TNO, it's also a Plutino. All those TNOs that are in orbital resonance with Pluto, having roughly the same orbit as Pluto, 250 years, are Plutinos, little Plutos. They are all kind, all kinds of uh, underworld figures and dark figures, and so is Aram. And actually, in in uh, uh, Christian times, he was Aram was the uh, the figure who took uh, the bad guys to down to the to hell. And uh, on Pluto, you have Orius. And Amicus, these have been there for, for ages, so I'm not going to elaborate them, but you also have Paracelsus. And Paracelsus is a polymath. So it, in order to survive, we need all the knowledge that can be. And on the south, south node, you have Apophis, Hubris, Fantasia, and two bright stars, Spica and Arcturus. I'm going to show you where these are. Apophis is the, uh, the, the snake who swallows the sun in Egyptian mythology, disaster. Hubris means that a revolt against the gods. Um, that's what uh, where heroes are usually falling uh, and, and uh, being destroyed by, poor, poor hubris being destroyed by, by the gods. And fantasy is, of course, fantasy. And on the dark moon, you have Tisiphone, uh, the goddess of retribution. And here is Spica and Arcturus. As you can see, see they are a mass a minutes apart, 23 minutes apart. And uh, Spica is the alpha star of uh, the Celestial Maiden, while Arcturus is alpha boots and it's way up to the north. So although in uh, according to astrological degree, they are almost exactly at the same, degree but as you can see there are, are at vastly different areas of the sky 
And so you need to be very careful with um, fixed stars. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is the, the I, I gave you two views. This is the equatorial view. Here's the celestial equator. And uh, so Spica is to the south and Arcturus is to the north to, in the northern hemisphere. And this is the ecliptical view, maybe, okay. I already said, I, I even typed it up there and I forgot to show it to you. Anyhow, so this is the ecliptical view. And as you can see, both are at the same degree of Libra, but they are at very, very different positions in the sky. And as you can see, the sky is really enormous. The universe is enormous. So we shouldn't really use the word conjunct. And this is something that Bernadette Brady told us way back in 2006. She, she, she su suggested uh, alignment instead of conjunction. And uh, this is why she also explained this many, many times. So this is the Mar Sun-Mars conjunction. These are difficult times. There's a lot of violence out there and it seems like the whole world is pushed into chaos. And again, the reason for this is because they want us to comply. They want us to beg for order. Uh, people don't like chaos. People don't like violence. We want to live in a nice and easy way. Well, I don't know how we will, but again, fight for your rights and try to try to really pay attention to what is happening around you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.